The amount of happiness gained from any action is directly proportionate to the state that an individual is in prior to that action. If you're at the lowest point of your life, recently homeless, wife left you, she took the kid. She made you keep the kids. If something life-changing happens at that very moment, like news that Overflow Season 2 is getting adapted by Ufotable, this would bring you far more joy than if you were in a content state. Although this is the pro-gamer move that you can use to keep women around for a long time, it goes by another name, gaslighting. This is why we'll occasionally search for the worst, most foul anime around, usually landing on something by Studio Idea Factory, before watching top tier anime. So I began searching for the worst anime of the season, analyzing every review, every studio, every tag. Then I gave up and went to Mal. I would have to play games to watch this, this is a season two, and this. This is just a good anime, the ratings must be broken. Oh, what is this? Giant beast of ours. Oh yeah, this is the one. Subscribe, we're so close to a million subscribers and I wanna hit it by the end of the week. Let me give you a satire synopsis of the anime. <laughs> In the beginning, the mighty beast created the land. Humans would then quickly take it all away from them, obviously British. This would lead the beast to constantly attack humans, who only have to defend them, this guy who's pointing his bow backwards. They also had clerics and paladins. Clerics hold tremendous power that they can't control, but by merging with a paladin, they can utilize that power. <laughs> This girl that just escaped is Budget Amelia, also known as 22. She was made in that lab like she was from a lesbian couple. Amelia is the traditional created to be evil, but actually really sweet. Oh yeah, these two are definitely main characters. This is Jiro the Already Dead. Now, if you notice his very edgy last name that sounds like something a 14 year old emo kid would call themselves, then you already know all you need to know about Jiro. His crappy gamer tag aside, Jiro is a monster hunter that gets money from killing beasts that all possess hentai-like powers for some reason. His whole shtick is that he's an emotionless paladin trying to overcome his previous explosive relationship. Now this cat girl will never be explained, but there's one thing that doesn't need explaining. <laughs> You either find her annoying and unfunny, or you have two brain cells. I have two brain cells. <laughs> Amelia is being pursued by the entire military, so she decides that she has to go shopping. What is that? It's the Ring of Promise. Whoever wears it will save the world, Nya. My precious. Also, it will kill whomever wears it. What? After losing her top tier disguise, she gets caught, and unfortunately, she accidentally Thanos snaps a few of them, unlocking the new kill streak. Only one thing can stop her now a really good kiss. This, of course, teleports them to a magical dimension. <laughs> Flashback. That is a kick ass name. I need to remember that. He copied my whole fucking flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! Meanwhile, while Amelia the 22nd is busy committing identity fraud, This is just like Attack on Titan! Amelia and Jiro then hit that mean T-post of fuse into a Super Saiyan to take down the beast. Now this beast is different from other beasts. It has a butthole, also a red eye. Hmm, I'm no genius, but maybe the big bright red thing that looks like a target. After using a bit of common sense to defeat the beast, there's really only one thing for a wanted fugitive to do. Party! Why are the background characters not moving? Blink if you need help. Wow, who would have seen this coming? It's almost like you should stop going out in public while people are looking for you. Jiro is forced to rescue them, who's rewarded by being blackmailed into joining them. They begin their adventure going to, God only knows really, accidentally ending up at a demi-human village. Turns out, every village has one of these. So after some intense conversation, they're permitted to stay. Yamuro! Yelling at children makes women attracted to you. Logically, you would assume that these animal-like people must have some special animal-like skills. But no, they're just regular humans with fur. 
a village of furries, and this one is Naruto running. You'll begin to see a trend. They show up at a village, a beast appears, surprise, it has a red eye, Jiro gets his ass beat, they T-pose, perform cataract surgery, and then go to the next village. Before leaving Furryland, they gain two new members, Dumbass and Double Ds. Isn't it obvious? Double Ds is a spear holder, oh, and a doctor. She tags along because when she was doctoring, a paladin came in with his cleric, only allowing Double Ds to treat him. She must have had that American healthcare plan. Why did he even bother bringing her into the tent to begin with? Who knows? Now we can talk about how stupid this is. Clerics are replaceable, there's no denying that. But if you're on a battlefield and your sword is broken in half, maybe it might be a good idea to fix it so you don't die too. This led to the cleric's death, making her distrust paladins. Also, <laughs> So she tags along to protect this random girl she just met. Now, I like puppies. People adopt puppies. And sometimes they abuse them. Sometimes worse. Yet, you don't see me following every person who adopts a puppy home because that's creepy. Dumbass, on the other hand, doesn't matter. He's about as useful as lines and dojins. They decide that the next place that they will visit is the place where the ring was forged. Not that it matters because they never make it there anyways. Instead, they end up at the Mountaineer Village where Jiro may or may not have murdered a lot of them in the past. But thanks to an old man who appeared in a two minute flashback at the beginning of the anime, they get in. <laughs> That's odd, because when you read his name on the note earlier, you all started chanting his name like you memorized it. Also, surprisingly, this isn't the most bizarre thing that they said. Sometimes the jokes write themselves. A beast shows up, they emote on it, T-pose and kill it. All while two individuals are approaching that were sent by the blondie responsible for creating Amelia. Suddenly, Jiro goes to the top of a mountain because... What the hell does that mean? No way! Is that another character from a flashback nobody remembers? And... <gasps> Dark Amelia! Amelia's were children that were mass-produced to act as bombs, which is historically accurate, I guess. Our Amelia decided after some guy died trying to rescue her that touching grass and living is kinda hype. Amelia clones hate her for this because, like Samsung Galaxies, they were made to explode. Raphael promptly folds them until they're saved by Super Saiyan Orc. Now together, they can- That son of a b- <laughs> This is probably a good time to talk about the bereavement curse. Every paladin has a curse on them that when their cleric dies, they lose all memory of them so they can just get with a new cleric. Now, this curse must be real crappy because Jiro broke it in the first episode, but only now do we learn about Jiro's past. Jiro fell in love with Yamato, even becoming a paladin to be with her. What he didn't know is by eating a fruit to become a paladin means that you must be loyal to the government. So they get sent to battlefields together, but at least. Time for a new village, and this one has a chicken version of her. Also his father-in-law through Yamato. You, you mean your son-in-law? He's the one with memory loss, not you. Also, that's a child. Raphael and Dark Amelia show up for a rematch. Zap, bam, pow, what a cool fight. This is about when Amelia's savior complex starts acting up like a bad case of herpes. They decide to fight separately because Amelia thinks that she can fix her. Dying is bad. No, not dying is cringe. But... You're just like me. Hey, why is the sad music playing? We can explore together. Why are my attacks not working? Power scaling in this world sucks. Date bio. Maybe I was wrong. Eh, screw it. How Amelia, her friends, and that dog survived is beyond me. Realizing that they have a nuclear bomb in their village, they do the only logical thing. Lock her up in a prison right next to the village. They of course escape, but they're stopped by the old man again. Did you get your ass beat by Raphael a few episodes ago? How are you planning on doing that? After realizing his plan is just really stupid, they let them go. Now the blood of Jesus Christ must be flowing through this woman's veins right about now because she goes to the lab to save all of her people. Blondie, however, has a plan to thwart them, make them all blow up. Sure, he's in the base, but I'm sure he thought that through. To get to him, first they have to fight Raphael, who's easily beaten. Alright guys, finish him off. 
He's just slowly limping away. Thank you. Wait, what? Luckily, the magic ring somehow factory reset all the clones. Don't ask how. So, all that's left now is Blondie, who turns into a beast just like Attack on Titan. Amelia channels her suddenly acquired beast controlling powers. Don't ask how. She uses the beast that was just kind of chilling there for some reason to kill Blondie, just like Attack on Titan. This woman who just showed up, Guess what she's from? That's right, a flashback. Surigi is that good person that works for the corrupt government. She tells them that the giant beasts with red eyes are part of a prophecy that says they are devouring all humans in preparation for the gods' arrival. But who cares about that? It's time for a new adventure. Amelia is running real low on life. So they're going to a new village that can take away her cleric powers so she can live longer. All right, this ceremony will take away your powers. But don't take your hands off, because we can only do this ceremony once. That's stupid! Don't worry, I'm sure nothing will happen during the ceremony. Save your complex! What is this guy doing here? Didn't you die? Luckily, the old man who talked all that crap about how he was gonna kill everybody is here. And he's dead. No way! Kumi is here and she's actually a super cool cleric that appeared in You Guessed It another flashback and she's dead. Screw it! While we're at it, on Lolly's the Lolly. Right about now, I was looking at the clock, realizing that there's only a few minutes left to deal with a lot of tapeworms and a giant beast that's pooping out more. This is when Catgirl does the only logical thing, teleports them to another dimension. <laughs> Proceeds to explain nothing. Amelia then goes CGI mode to use her ring fit to end the battle in a single shot. At least we got a happy ending though. I swear they better not tact ope this and have it be a gacha game prequel. The story concept by itself is honestly pretty solid. The execution was done poorly. These terrifying beasts, whose ass is literally in the title, appear then die in two seconds. It's almost like the beast are not the real threat, but humanity, just like- Hey man, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it a bit. Hey, can I copy your homework too? I think the main difference between this and Attack on Titan is that this isn't gripping me by the balls like it should be. It's simply not giving me enough information to get invested. I should be asking, what is the true prophecy? What happened to Raphael? How corrupt is the government? My only question is how did he run vertically down a wall? The characters almost have no personality, all of their wikis are blank, which is saying something because Redo of Healers characters have several pages, even I got one. The only trait they all share is almost all of them are extremely useless. Double D's only did doctor stuff a single time for the crew, but I forgive her. Dumbass on the other hand, I think I've seen pre-owned condoms more useful than him. Even when the characters died, you felt nothing other than how did they get there in the first place? These people have a flying ship. You expect me to believe that they walked there in the time it took them to fly there? Regardless, the characters were completely carried by the greatness of Catgirl. <laughs> this fantasy world is very boring. You see this? This is an apple. But here, it's a white apple. This is a regular horse. This is a red horse. Now this is a dog. This is a dog with big ass ears. In episode one, we get this really cool looking beast. Later on, we get really big worm. The same could be said about the abilities. In the first two minutes, we're introduced to a paladin that has ice abilities. So what does our main character have? He can stab things in the eye real hard. The only thing they have going for them is that unlike everybody else, they have to T-pose to transform. The animation and art style is honestly not bad for one of the worst anime of the season. It was produced by Asahi Production, who's only known for making the most mediocre anime ever. This is why you'll see decent animation for the most part, but if you have a pair of functioning eyeballs, you'll begin to notice lasers that don't cut, pan shots with no movement, and here, they're not moving, yet their hair is somehow. Battle scenes are a few minutes long at the most, even though they don't show the full fight because we need to show the background characters talking about the fight instead. The music runs into a similar situation. The tension building moments were let down by music in many parts. The voice acting team was in the same boat. I don't want to hear people talking normally when delivering the biggest news of the anime like it's a slice of life. I want some dramatic expressions. <laughs> This makes me laugh because I know a human voice that. The OP and ED were both very good. 
even though she just walks in a straight line the whole ED. This is an anime that was produced by the creator of School Live, which is surprising because this somehow gave me less trauma than School Live. Since it is an anime original, it means no spoilers for manga readers and no light novelers comparing every line that's different, so that is a plus. I will also say, this anime is not as bad as I expected. I was actually invested by the first episode, but as the story progressed, it felt more like a video game going from area to area like a bad RPG. Now, before I get comments asking if I feel good about myself for making fun of an anime people worked really hard on, all I have to say is... <laughs> Well, obviously, 0 out of 10, not enough T posing. Hello, poor time management lunar here. It is currently 5 a.m., and I haven't done the music or the thumbnail, so if this video did get up by some miracle on time, click here to check out my channel, click here to check out the most recent video, and click here to check out the recommended video, and click here to check out my second channel. Alright, goodbye.